Greeting, Traveler. my assistance. <laughs> Good evening, THL. Welcome to yet another episode of The Saloon. I am Ted. I am joined here, as always, tonight by Sage. How you doing, man? I'm all right, man. How are you doing, Ted? You had a good week? Yeah. So yeah. Like Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah. Same old, same old. And then, also, yeah, of course, man. for the first time, as you can see, we're on Mexico. Or not, first time you can see him. I worded that very poorly. <laughs> You're good, buddy. It's the big face reveal, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the face. How's it going, mode. everybody? <laughs> I know that's what everyone's tuning in for. Happy to be here. Oh, yeah. There's so much hype around Ron Mexico's face, man. Like, everybody knows him as, <laughs> as uh, you know, the, the dude in the sombrero. Who's in the your profile? I mean, picture? I'm sure I don't look anything like uh, Michael Vick <laughs> in a sombrero here, right. you know. Uh, yeah, might come as a bit of a shock to the system, but uh, <laughs> here I am, excited to uh, to talk some hero and go over uh, some of the meta changes we've been seeing. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, there's been a pretty big shakeup between week one and week two. That is for sure. All right, so should we get into it? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and hop All right. right in. So here's so, our uh, meta report. Yeah, we're starting out the meta report as usual, and uh, as you can tell, there has been a significant change. Uh, in, in week one, the most common ban was Demon Hunter by a pretty wide margin. This time, it's uh, I mean, it's a little more narrow of a margin, but this time the most common ban was Warrior, for good reason at that. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, as well, as well, there's a very clear lineup that is uh, a favorite in Hero right now, which is Demon Hunter, Hunter Rogue, Warrior. Yeah, by a massive margin, 20 times that got brought, although it didn't seem to really um, move the needle much. 10 wins, 10 losses, 43 game wins, 43 game losses, a hard 50% across the board. But clearly people agree that that was the lineup to bring, although it looks like there's a bit of a meta breaker lineup with the Demon Hunter, Hunter Priest Rogue at 12 and 4 game wins and 4 and 0 in uh, mm -hmm. matches. Yeah, definitely. You also see the Demon Hunter Hunter Priest Warrior at 4-2 with 6. It looks like spicing a 
Priest into your lineup really has been successful. I mean, it's yeah. what we've been seeing a lot through throughout uh, Hero, I think this format specifically favors things that are polarized and priest is very often a polarizing class against a lot of the lineups that get brought out oftentimes it just eats a ban which can be good for you and other times it can just wreck uh, a lot of your opponent's plans because of what priest does best yeah and especially right now we're in a you know there's a lot of aggro running around and that's what priest does so well just shutting down aggro Absolutely. And I'd like to point and out that... Uh, it's important that it's a counter to Warrior as well, which yeah. is on the rise. It's one of the strongest decks. Definitely. Yeah, it is the strongest counter to Warrior. And uh, I'd like to point out in the uh, class brings that Mage brought seven times, had a 0% win rate, and Shaman was brought zero times. So we have... I don't think we're going to be seeing a whole lot of data on Shaman going forward. Yeah, Shaman's just not going to get broad, I think. And Mage is looking in a really rough spot. 18 games, 3 and 15, and 0 and 7 last week. Yeah, very interesting Paladin going 2 and 1 last week. Yeah, maybe we've got some Murloc Paladins out yeah, there. Yeah, probably. And I mean, don't get me wrong, that's definitely a small sample size. But it's a lot more promising than Mage is looking. And oh, yeah. Warlock is another one on the rise here. Uh, Zoo is getting stronger and stronger. Obviously, Scrap Imp is a card that a lot of people have figured out is insanely good. And um, while it's possible that some of these lists could have been Control Warlock, I think the prevailing thought right now is mainly at Zoo. And Warlock going 11-4 and four last week means that one's on the rise as well. Um, something else interesting I'm seeing is we commented that it seems like throwing a Priest in your lineup helped. But if you look at Priest, it went 10 and 12 last week. So, for some this, reason, this the, li true. the lineups with Priest did well, but the Priest didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe a lot of it was it got banned, or maybe there were a bunch of people that brought it and didn't uh, have to play it because they swept with other classes and it acted as a scare class it, hard to say but yeah. actual priest games priest doesn't actually look that strong definitely and you're seeing it a lot of times be subbed in for either the hunter rogue or warrior which all had above 50 percent and demon hunter with a 37 and a half percent win rate that i mean it's either getting banned or just beaten outright you yeah again demon hunter is the class to beat if you're not bringing stuff that beats it then you're banning it exactly every time. yeah so uh sometimes it's easy to read into something like that and say oh 37 percent win rate maybe demon hunter's bad but it's more that it's enemy number one and people are kind of looking to target that so that's probably a good explanation for the win rate being as low as it is yeah and i think also a lot of people would be you know maybe willing to not bring demon hunter if it's not winning but then you're just leaving your warrior wide open to a ban and nobody would be happy with that makes sense yeah all right any other things jumping out here on on the meta what, what about druid druid is actually getting brought a fair amount but it's doing it's just floundering yeah well again i think it's more of a counter class like we've said before you're bringing it to counter some certain things but yeah druid does counter rogue very well yeah um usually spell druid is brought more than um big druid but it it definitely has some game i can attest to that i played against heat shock on stream and that uh druid spell druid of his was giving me headaches so um i i wouldn't say it's it's something to overlook even though its win rate looks a little low it it still has function definitely all right should we hop into our review of last week let's do it sure all right so first things first, Dad Legend versus an IO team. And you know what, Sage? I'm going to be nice and I'm going to let you run down this one. <laughs> well, uh, Dad Legend is on a real tear right now. They, uh, they are really just, like, ripping people apart. Uh, Icicles going 3-1 versus Desharmu. 
Starlax going 3-2 versus Arhat. Yellow Dart going 3-0 versus Dano, who didn't bring Shaman this week, but it didn't make much of a difference. Uh, Hockey Boys going 3-1 versus Matted Arms, and Turd Herder 3-1 versus Jim Phylos. Uh, and just every time... It, it, I, I've been not predicting them to 5-0 because I'm not on their team this season, but maybe I should really start changing my strategy because now that I'm predicting them to... Like maybe even lose sometimes, they are just refusing to lose at all. No, yeah, <laughs> or even losing. It's the dad kind of legend trolling Sage is real. He picks them to they win five zero. They never do. As soon as he stops, they do it twice in a row. Also, I just want to talk about how insane it is that Dad Legend is eight points ahead after two weeks. Well, like eight 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 points ahead of the rest of the pack after oh, only yeah. two weeks. That's yeah. Have That's we insane. ever seen a team actually go com- like fully undefeated through 10 games with all of their players? Two weeks, not a single uh, match loss. Not to they my knowledge. lost I don't a game know. here and there in their matches, but like just full sweeps yeah. all the way through with 20-point yeah. um, weeks twice now. I don't know that that has ever happened. I can't say for a fact. Uh, probably people have come close, but I don't I, it's it sounds pretty far fetched. Uh, if if I wasn't staring at the results right here, I wouldn't have believed it myself, to be honest. Yeah. Another yeah, thing. Um, that... Hey, maybe maybe it's just that they finally cut the dead weight. You know, they got Sage. Yeah, off the team seriously. Now All of a sudden, they're winning now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, another thing I want to mention is that the cutoff for playoffs last year was like I think around one thirty five for last season. And they're already at forty six after two weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> Yeah, I think we've got a an early playoff favorite here. Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty clear that uh they're gonna be a contender again. They're coming for the back to back titles, so well, putting I, no I, one else on notice. I mean I was gonna say, like, is that surprising anybody? Like like they won the championship last season and now they're all, they only got stronger during the off season. Yeah. Yeah, pretty insane. <laughs> clearly, clearly an upgrade. Getting rid yeah, of Sage. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not having that great of a season so far. So, <laughs> yeah, clearly an upgrade. All right. Anyways, next off we have Tam Pam Surf Slam versus License to Illidan. Ron, go ahead. So um, I was a bit surprised by this outcome. Uh, I like to overreact to week ones and uh, Tan Pams with a 21 point week and License to Illidan with a six point week. I'm like, oh, clearly Tan Pams is going to win. So, of course, License to Illidan shows up and uh, really just incredible performance. I mean, there were three very close games. This really could have gone Tan Pams way. Oh, definitely. But um, I was impressed. You know, License to Illidan. Uh, they they had a rough week and then you look back on it and you're like oh well their week one was against dad legend so maybe dad legend is just that good um because now they're uh they go up against tan pams and other than the three two for a2 battleship who is on a tear throughout all of thl so far this season across all series um the rest of the team for illidan just uh really really showed up to play 3-0 3-2 3-2 3-2 and uh they they put themselves in contention right in the middle of the pack yeah i mean definitely something to mention there that tam pams even in a loss they're still putting up 10 points which is very relevant absolutely yeah um tan pams is is looking like a contender themselves i mean they lost to this team and they still have more points than the team that just beat them so uh they're they're definitely going to be mixing it up come playoff time i think yeah for sure yeah for sure for sure Uh, that is a really good showing from them this week uh even the one loss they took was still two points towards their week so they they definitely needed a big week after losing to Dad Legend as hard as they did. All right. Next up, we have Spy Set Flies versus F2O Black, and this was a this was quite the match. Spy Set Flies barely squeaking out the fourteen to twelve win. Yeah, this one looked like a playoff preview as well. Yeah, I'd say so. I could definitely see these two meeting in the playoffs. 
Yeah, th this is probably what got me over the top as far as that prediction goes, because I'm the only one that thought Spires was going to win here. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a good call there. Uh, it definitely came down to the wire. It looked like, um, you know, other than two sweeps at the one and the two, all the rest of the matches were really hotly contested. Yeah, and you see, like, what both the three seed and the five seed, three two, if F two O black wins one of those, wins game five, they take the week. That's that's insane. Yeah, and uh, and like Pod just commented in chat here, we've got uh, Rebobson and Liquidox starting out a combined one and three, which I'm sure was not the plan for F two L, but uh, I'm sure this is going to be. Uh, the week that they're planning on having that bounce back and trying to move their way back up towards the top of the standings. And no, for yeah, Spies yeah. of uh, Flies, uh, Spies of Flies looks like they're just making a name for themselves early. Like, hey guys, just just so you know, this team is is a major contender here. You, you have to no wonder... You, you do have to wonder, though, uh, Rebobson brought Priest and banned Warrior, but if you're bringing Priest, you want to beat Warrior with it, so... Uh, I, I think maybe he wants it, in the future he consider sticking on the path. You know, like I don't think Warrior was really the band there, and there's just some really like obvious kind of strategy sort of things that I think are just very common right now. And if you're bringing Priest, you're not banning Warrior, right? I mean, I can understand that maybe he anticipated the priest was getting banned because of Lotus Knight's warrior and could have just tried like some multiple layers of psychology there. But Lotus just went and defaulted with, I'm going to ban the the best deck out there. And I mean, I, I certainly don't take too much issue with Rebobson also just straight up saying, you know what, I'm still just going to ban warrior. It's one of the best decks you can bring. So um, it. It makes a reasonable amount of sense, but it does still seem a little iffy to bring Priest and then still ban Warrior. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's a, yeah, definitely something else to mention that we had talked about um, during the preseason. This is the danger of having this lineup that, you know, you stack the 1, 2, and 3. That if just one person underperforms, you're going to have trouble. And in this case, they kind of have two people underperforming. Yeah, of course it is week two, so yeah, uh, definitely. all of us lower in the standings too are are hoping to turn things around. So uh, you know, nothing is is written in stone just yet, but uh, it's it's one of those early warning signs where you want to make sure you get things kind of pointed in the right direction sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah, it's okay though. I mean, uh, Ron, you and I we're we're still in the middle of the pack. We we have plenty of room to grow. <laughs> hey, yeah, Burninator just is like right in the middle. We're we're totally fine. That's that's in the mix. That's all you want after two weeks. If you're not, you know, Dad Legend, just uh, getting twenty point weeks on a two zero record. Also, um, something else to keep in mind that while you know there are a few, or while there are more teams in the same playoff spots or a number of playoff spots, so it is harder to make playoffs. There being more teams also means that there's more weeks in the season. So if you start out weak, you still have more time to recover. This is true, yeah. And good point, yep. based. Uh, high variance, you know, four oh, matches yeah, definitely. is, is uh, not a lot of a sample size to go off of. All right, so the next one. All right, Sage, do you want to run through this one? Yeah. ATL versus Booze Cruise. Uh, we've got Blue Spartan losing 1 3 versus Zancat. I am really honestly shocked that Blue already lost. Uh, I was expecting him to try to rekindle the, the magic he had last season where he was just tearing it up and is unfortunate, very unfortunate that, that he lost uh, this week. I think he really uh, uh, kind of disappointed here, man. Like, come on, Blue. You're better than that. <laughs> and then we got <laughs> Binoculars taking it 3-1 over Dr. Bomb D. Uh, I don't really know either of these guys too well. I, I know Dr. Bomb D is, is supposed to be the bomb. So, uh, again, uh, a little disappointed here. I wanted to see Dr. Bomb D do well. Uh, Pond going 1-3 versus Matty Ebbs. Matty Ebbs is ha having a killer season so far. Uh, Shadow Ranger going 3-1 versus Cone, which uh, not too surprised with these uh, results, to be honest. Uh, 
And we got Shinsui going 3-2 versus Shu Baka. And this one I'm a little bit surprised as well. Shu is not starting out too hot this season. Uh, and he's he's a lot... He, he's about the same I am. He's just... He's really good to be in the five. Yeah. He's definitely. just a super solid five. And I guess Shinsui is as well. Uh, I've always just, you know, had the habit of sitting into the Shadow Realm. But yeah. Uh, this this looked like it was a really tight series. 14-12. Uh, to 12. ATL taking it over uh, Bruce Cruz. Bruce Cruz definitely better than I really had anticipated at the start of the season, I think. Uh, they're cutting it close with their matches when they do take it out. So, uh, yeah, I think I think they, they, could, they could stay in the mix for sure. Yeah, this was a cool match to see. Like, I think we might have un- underrated both ATL and Bruce Cruz. Um, and these two played each other really close. Like, uh, the one, two, and three for Booze Cruz really can contend. And if Cone and Chewbacca can turn it around from their O2 starts, Booze Cruz can really start making some noise. And on ATL's side, um, you know, they're undefeated. 34 points undefeated. And I think they're going up against Dad Legend this week. So this is a prove it week. But uh, yeah. even with Martin losing in the one, the team. And uh, and Pond actually losing in the three, which are often wins. I feel like you can count on with those two players. Um, the other three really uh, came through, and uh, this this team is looking good. So this is a prove it week coming up. It's going to be interesting. On, I, I want to say that's a big one by binoculars in the three or in the two rather. Oh, he, absolutely. Yeah, well, pretty big PR difference. Um, I played against Bomb D in Legacy and got swept. Uh, they're definitely a really good player, so uh, that's, yeah. that's a big win. Like, um, um, off the top of my head, historically, he's been a three seed, maybe even a four seed sometimes. So him playing in the two, and you know, being a hundred PR underdog and still picking up the win, which ended up you know giving his team the win, that's a huge one. Maybe it comes down to that warlock in the lineup. Maybe. And then, yeah, but like you were saying, another thing that surprised me is Chewbacca. You know, he's historically been a over 50% player in the four seed. So you would think he would drop down to the five seed and just kill it. But Yeah, but I think I think Shansui is unfair in the five. I think that's, that's a big strength of ATL. I think his PR doesn't show the, the strength of the player he really is. So that was always going to be a pretty hype match. And it went 3-2, so that could have gone either way. But uh, my man Shansui is very good, and, and he sent Chewbacca off to the Shadow Realm this time around. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, Lord, um, Blue Spartan is pointing out that Lars was never a four. All right, yeah, I, like like I knew he was a three for sure. I thought he might have been a four for like a week or two, but no, he was only a three. Yeah, no, yeah, I, no, I definitely knew he was a three on the finals team, which is the last time we saw him. But yeah, anyways, big win for him though, and big win for ATL. All right, next off we have NPH versus the Young Guns, and NPH, you know, they're pretty much continuing what they did last season. And even the season before, just dominant went over the young guns. Only loss yeah, they took was big. only loss they took was Skittles two to three to Dabs. You know that's I think you're fine to lose one two to three, eighteen point week. That's you know big. And yeah, I think they're you know arguably maybe not the one though. PWE is going to be going back up to the one, which I think is big for them. But I think they're you know pretty solid in every scene. Yeah, we're going to be seeing uh, Pee Wee and Skittles bouncing around a whole lot in the one two, I think. Yeah, that was their running theme last season, yeah. so I think it's just going to continually be, you know, a game of musical chairs. I, it's the one, it's the two. Well, like I was, I was going to say, they've been doing that since the first season they were in THL. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a very strong uh, bottom three seeds, the three, four, and five. Oh, definitely. Not, not to say that their one and two aren't strong. Their one and two are going to pick up matches as well. But their four and five are really good. Yeah. Yeah, this is this was a pretty dominant performance against the team I thought was um uh definitely stronger than they're looking so far. I mean again, it's early. Uh they are down close to the very bottom of the standings, young guns are, but um I thought their lineup was very strong and they've had some early struggles and maybe, you know, it's just running into really strong teams. No pros here is uh 
a, an extremely good team right up at number two in the standings now, and they were incredibly good last season. So uh, maybe this isn't too representative of what young guns can do yet, but uh, they, they definitely need to turn it around quick because the season can get away from you fast with uh, this many extra teams being added to the hero field and, and the field being as stacked as it is. And, and you will notice that they all brought Priest as well. So that is definitely probably going to be a key part of their lineup going forward. Yeah, good point. And yeah. all Priest. All right. All and Demon Hunter, all Priest. Our um, final match of the week, Ron, I'll let you go ahead. All right, and the final match here, we had the Battle of the Casters teams, the Saloon host uh, teams here. Uh, this one was very, very close. Um, myself and Heat Shock, uh, Heat Shock got the best of me on stream. Uh, it was a pretty entertaining series if anyone wants to watch the VOD. Um, Harthy came through as, as the 3-2. He was actually the last match that was played. So we were all, you know, just edge of our seat waiting on the outcome between Harthy and the last champ to find out what would happen. And I know their match went like an hour and a half or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like, a long one. Like, yeah, yeah we were all, we were all stressing long. about it. Well, and, and so, I, I, what I just oh, remember, it was like, it was like the three of us. And I think like sanguine and silver or something all in discord chilling, just waiting for the result from that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, every 10 minutes it was like, yep, they're still in the match. They're yeah. Still in the match. <laughs> Uh, interesting interesting side note this uh this uh, series of matches actually started about as early as it possibly could have and ended about as late as it possibly yeah. could have because ted and medusas played each other literally right after saloon ended last week and then we were right down to the wire when sunday turned into monday for the outcome of the final match but very close all the way through. Um, easily could have gone either way. I'm, I'm happy that my team was able to get the victory. But uh, I think the cult, you know, down in the standings right now, they've got a lot of time to make it up. And I think they're highly capable of doing so. Heat Shock in the last champ and Sanguine in, the, in those three spots are good enough to get three wins every week i think i see how it is i don't i don't know about ted and quaz that <laughs> might be some dead weight there but you know hey, maybe hey. maybe they can come through in a week or two who knows <laughs> I, I mean I, I was gonna say just something to mention i am down to the four and sanguine is up to the three now oh wow wow oh, okay. uh, yeah that's really one one week too late and it's Wow. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah really we yeah. just barely missed out on the ted versus sage match oh that god that would have been at least our 0 and 2 saloon hosts would have actually been guaranteed a win if that had happened. It's it's really just kind of disappointing. I I, I mean it's probably better that that didn't happen because last week's saloon would have just been. That's true. We could have easily degenerated into just a lot of trash talking. Oh, it it, it would have oh, been yeah. an hour of it from the two of us. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, I will say I, I'm I'm only really happy that icicles prediction didn't come true because that would have just oh he would have been laughing all the way there, I, man, cause I, what? I mean to be fair he did get every match correct he predicted every match correctly it's just wow, he didn't get he his did tie actually predict everyone incorrect he yeah. just didn't get his tie yeah that, that's yeah. true wow he was right on the money yeah big week for yeah. him in fairness he just predicted the three hosts to lose so that was an easy three <laughs> uh correct predictions right off wait, the bat no <laughs> he, he thought he he predicted Quaz to win and oh Quaz did he did not. Yeah. oh okay oh all right still though come on Quaz. he had some great picks yeah yeah he did yeah whenever i lost the same one i was like is icicles gonna be a, a prophet this week what what <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, it's time for the commercial break. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's do this. So, hey there, THLers, Hearthstone enthusiasts, and occasional spam bots. Please consider subscribing to our channel. This subscription enables the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website, as well as improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you can actually sub to the channel for free. 
Subscribers get a THL emoticon as well as the lovely THL chat batch. So hit that heart button, keep the notifications on, and make sure you catch our team broadcasting live. We appreciate each and every one of you. And special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points of interest as well. Our website at teamhearthlegends.com. Follow us on Twitter at THL underscore HS. And join us on Discord at Team Hearth Legends. You are, of course, watching us on this Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Team Hearth Legends. And for all of you THL fanatics out there, this season, for the first time ever, there is a THL show on this channel every single day of the week. If you're stuck inside, like most of us during these crazy times, you can't go wrong to, with tuning in for some amazing Hearthstone-related entertainment. Now back to the good part. Oh, that, that was all right. Good. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. Let's yeah, do man. It. Uh, the uh, the preview for next week. Yeah. Yeah. And, week it's the week three preview time, boys. Uh, Ted, you want to take this from me? Yeah, sure. So to start off, we have Dad Legend versus ATL. In the one, Icicles versus Blue Spartan. Two, Starlax versus Binoculars. Three, Yellow Dart versus Pond. Four, Hockey versus Shadow Ranger. And five, Turd versus Shunsui. Oh, man. This is going to be a tough pick for me this week, guys. I, I tell you what. Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> all right all right let's, but, let's yeah. hear it all right i'll um i'll uh, run through uh, mine first me okay, go ahead Ted. yeah all right i have icicles in the one starlax in the two yellow in the three hockey in the four but i do have shun Sui in the five so i'm giving it to dad legend four one i'm thinking you know i don't get me wrong turd herder is good but like we said earlier, Shunsu is kind of unfair in the five. Yeah, I, I've been really surprised that Turd's been picking up these ones as well as they have. They must be giving them some real good coaching. Uh, better coaching than they ever gave me last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. Uh, uh, it, yeah, it, it, they're, they're a great team. I honestly miss being in their team Discord. I, I hope we play them sooner than later so I can be like, all right, well, uh, can I can I come join you guys until playoffs? Come on, come on. <laughs> All right. Stage. Um, you want to go? All right. Oh, I want to go last. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Sure. So, um, this one, Dad Legend, uh, hasn't lost a single match. You know, forty-six points, top of the standing, dominating everybody. Um, you know, it's going to be hard to pick against Dad Legend here. But I've got Blue winning the one. <laughs> I've got Starlax in the two, Yellow Dart in the three, and I think Shadow Ranger and my man Shun Sui pick up the wins for ATL. ATL's looking to make a name for themselves. They're going to get it done against the Supreme Team, the defending champion, and pick up the 3-2 victory. Bold picks here from the guy who is currently worse than a coin flip. <laughs> all right yeah i mean that that's fair man i would love to see that happen because i'm so tired of uh picking against them and having my predictions just get thrown back in my face and I, i'm so tired of it you know what man i'm gonna make this real real easy this week all right i'm just gonna go with the 5-0 all right i'm gonna give the dead looking 5-0 all right it, man, it, we haven't heard that in a while apart. It, it, if they do it a third time in a row then i mean that's just more points for my scoreboard on the show <laughs> <laughs> Easy, easy stick of my life. All right, all of them. They all gonna win again. They're gonna start the season three and zero. All five of them. All right. That that's that's my prediction. So uh, go get it, Dad Legend. Go win your matches. All right. Ron, go ahead. All yeah, right. So on to the yeah onto the next one here. We've yeah, got yeah, no yeah. Oh, okay. versus the cult. Um, this one is also gonna be. A bit more interesting than I think the um, the actual points show right now. No pros here sitting at the number two spot in standings right now. And we've got Colt down at the bottom. But I think Colt is still a very strong team. And I also think they line up pretty well into NPH. Um, Heat Shock is incredible. For those of you who haven't been paying attention to the March Madness, April Absurdity, Mayhem, whatever we're wanting to call it uh heat shock has made it in the finals already 
Um, extremely good player. I think they take the one. Uh, I've got Last Champ winning in the two, another very underrated player. Um, Sanguine, I think, picks up the win over Disco here in the three. And then uh, we get to the dead weight on the Colts roster here in the bottom two seeds. Uh, <laughs> but really, though, I mean, Pasca and Electa Buzz are actually very good, and it would be hard regardless for uh, for Big Ted and Quaz to win. But I think uh, No Pros picks up the four and the five as victories. But um, overall, that's going to be a 3-2 Colt victory. All right. Wow, a 3-2 for the Colt. You, you're really... You're really rooting for Ted over here, man. I, I, I think he appreciates <laughs> hey, that. Hey, I, I see, I see an zero and two. I, I, I'm like, all right, yeah, zero and three. Keep it, keep it going. Show me you can win <laughs> yeah. before I pick you. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, uh, I'm, I'm a little. I think my predictions are a little different than yours, uh, but they are uh, similar in some ways. I've got Heat Shock. If if Heat Shock can beat you, Ron, then I think he can beat anybody. All right. So I've got Heat Shock taking it in the one over Pee Wee. I've got Skittles taking it over the last champ. I think Skittles and Pee Wee are just going to keep flip-flopping, so that just makes sense to pick Skittles to win because they're going to flip-flop again next week. And then I've got Sanguine taking it in the three over Disco. She is just really, really good. If she can beat me, she can beat anybody. And uh, <clears throat> then I've got Pasca taking it over Ted in the four because Pasca's winning, Ted isn't. And Electabuzz, for similar reasons, taking it over Quaz, giving it 3-2 to two to NPH. I think they're going to go far this season, and they're going to make it in the playoffs again quite easily. All right. Um, I'm going to give it to PW in the one. I you know I think definitely on paper, Heat Shock is favored over PWE, but I think, you know, again, I think PWE is a very strong player. I don't think his PR is what it should be. And I think, you know, he's going to pull out a close one. However, I am giving it to the Colt in the bottom four. I think, you know, obviously Champ and Sanguine in the 2-3 are very strong. And I think it's, you know, Quaz and I are going to start bouncing back here. Solid. Well, I mean, y'all better or else you're not going to go very far this season. I love how you baited uh, PWE there with uh, picking him on the one, and he's like, oh, thank you, Ted. And you go, boom, <laughs> Colt wins the next four. <laughs> uh, uh, also, also, I would just like to talk about how Sage is talking trash about us being going to while he also is. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I mean, I'm just the pot over here calling the kettle black. <laughs> All right. Nice. Anyways, on to our next one. Go ahead, Sage. All right, yeah. This uh, on our next matchup, we've got the spies that flies versus young guns, and uh, this is looking a little bit stacked for the flies here. I think young guns have not been doing too hot this season so far, and and the spies have been doing pretty well. Uh, it's Aviously versus Dabs in the one seed, and Lotus Knight versus Catman in the two, Based versus Nine Eyebrows in the three. Lemur versus Booze in the four, and Chubbs Peterson's Hand versus Doomsday in the five. And uh, I'm always picking Aviously, I think. Uh, I really can't root against Aviously. The kid is so good. I mean, we did get burned last week (laughs) when uh, when Itachi pranked us. But I I guess if Dabs is in chat counting down how many of us root against him, then we'll know what's up. All right. (laughs) So we've got Aviously taking the one here, and then I, I've got Catman taking it over Lotus Knight in the two. Uh, they're both one and one. It could really go either way here. Uh, I know Lotus Knight has them on PR, but Catman is really good. And I mean, th- th- these old dudes—they're—they're they're real good at, at their data. They, they've been around a little more. Uh, oh, so I think, I think Catman yeah, takes it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think clearly takes, Catman's based... like in his seventies. Oh yeah. Dude's old. Uh, now we got based, <laughs> a girl based, uh, taking it over uh, nine eyebrows in the three. Uh, again, it's kind of a little lopsided here. Based is starting real, real hot, and nine eyebrows is starting out real, real cold. So uh, I, I do think that base is going to take it in the three. And then we've got Lemur versus Buse, and I'm giving it to Lemur again. Uh, Buse is having a slightly worse start to the season than Lemur is. I think Lemur uh, got a pretty good upset week one, if I recall correctly, and that 
probably going to keep showing us that he can he can bring the wins in. Uh, Buse, I really hope that you can turn around, buddy, but until you do, I'm going to be picking against you, man. Then we've got Chubbs versus Doomsday, and I'm going to pick Chubbs here. Chubbs is starting out real hot, and Doomsday is starting out real cold, just like their three seeds. Uh, so I think Spies, uh, well, I think Chubbs is going to take it over Doomsday as well, and Spies is going to win this 4-1 to one with... Uh, Lotus Knight being the only loss that they take this week. Uh, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they sweep. I really wouldn't. I just I think uh, outside of Dad Legend and Murderators, I'm not going to be picking any sweeps. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Solid. All right. Ron, you want to go ahead? So this match, uh, it looks really exciting in the one and the two. Um, those are going to be some some interesting games. Um, I hope that we could get maybe one or both of them on stream because I'd love to see it. But Avi versus Dabs, um, I, I think I have to still go with, obviously, especially coming off of a sweep against Itachi last week. I think he looks to get back on track and, uh, and picks up a win here. Um, Lotus against Catman. Uh, I was kind of in doubt about this one. Uh, you know, both of them are incredible players. I think I just kind of wanted to default towards PR more than anything else. I'm pretty sure Lotus Knight can pick up the victory here. Uh, based against Nine Eyebrows, I really wanted to pick Nine Eyebrows because I think they're so good. And, um, you know, 0-2 is not representative of the skill level. But against Based in the three, I don't think that first victory is coming this week. Based is an insanely good player. Uh, on a 2-0 start uh, to Nine Eyebrows 0-2 start, I think Based is going to take down the win. And uh, the Spies That Flies with their power three are going to lock it up early with a 1-2-3. Uh, in the four and the five, we've got Buse versus Lemur and Doomsday versus Chubbs. And I kind of like seeing um, Young Guns start to turn it around a little bit with some of these O2s getting some wins on the on the board here. I think Buse can get the victory in the four, and uh, call it a hunch, but I think Doomsday is going to take the five. Uh, so Spies of Fly still wins 3-2, but uh, Young Guns picks up some crucial points and hopefully sets themselves up for a better next week. Yeah, um, I'm pretty similar to you guys. I have Avi in the one because it's Avi. Um, Lotus in the two because it's Lotus in the two. Like that that one too is just so insane. It feels yeah, Lotus kind of belongs as a one seed. Yeah, but, you know, he can't be a one seed, but he's on a team with Avi, so that's yeah. that's an insane one two punch. Yeah, and and then you got to go down to the three. You have base two. You know, I'd say base is definitely a good two, and then could even be like a fringe one. If you're yeah. building a team like that, so yeah, I agree. So having her in the three is just mind blowing. So again, like you said, I'm also picking based in the three. But then, yeah, I mean my line or my predictions are the exact same as yours, Ron. I think Young Guns do pull out the four five, which is kind of the spies' weak points. But at the end of the day, that's still three to two for the spies. I think what's kind of funny here is that the four and five is also Young Guns' weak points right now. I mean, I'd say the mess of the roster is kind of their weak points to an extent. <laughs> I mean, the team's zero and two, and we have two yeah. one ones and three o twos. But again, it's early, and this would be one of the weeks to turn it around. Definitely. And those of you out there watching. Keep in mind that when we make these predictions, the best of us so far is Sage, who is exactly the same as a coin flip. Ted and I are still worse at our predictions than flipping a coin. So, you know, you got to take our predictions with a grain of salt here. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, it does become easier to predict in the future when we see, you know, more results, more records. We see, oh, this player is playing above their skill level this season, this player is playing below. Right now, oh, yeah, I, just... can't, I can't wait to improve my pick rate when I start just relying on players' current win rates instead of being mystified about O and O and one and one and such. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it it's a lot easier to you know pick more accurately when we see how players are playing versus going off of PR. And oh, yeah, once we get to like week five, I think we'll have uh we'll we'll have much better pick rates. Definitely. All right. Next up. F2L. Oh, man. This is, this is hype. The Inoyo team. So hype. 
All right, we have Itachi versus Ducharmo in the one. Rebob versus Arhat in the two. Liquidox versus Dano in the three. Chronic versus Mad Arms in the four, and Kazargar against Jim in the five. Ted, did you s- did you copy my homework? What do you mean? I, I, I did I did all my predictions before you guys did, and yours are the same as mine. Oh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> all right all right go ahead yeah but anyways i have Ducharmo over itachi in the one again you know this is i i feel like this one is as good as a coin flip they're both you know 550 pr very strong players all that stuff but yeah um i eat that one could definitely go either way and the two i have our hat over Rebobson. you know it's clearly because of that pr advantage as you can see there's huge pr differential there but, um, no, like, obviously, you know, b- again, both very strong players, but Rebob is not having a good start to the season, of course. You know, there's a lot, long time to turn that around more. Uh, three, I have Ox over Dano. Again, Ox, I'd say, one, is the stronger player, and I'm not trying to say Dano's bad, but Liquid Ox is just insane, and he is having the stronger season. Four, I have Chronic over Matt, and five, I have Jim over Kazargar. So I'm giving it three to two to an IO team. Yeah, and we yeah. already know that uh, Sage's picks are identical to yours. Yeah. Well, I still want to go through them if you don't. Oh, yeah, me. no, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, well, anyways, uh, I didn't appreciate Itachi's stunt last week. All right. <laughs> counting, counting down. If he's in chat, man. I'll tell you right now, I'm picking against you, Itachi. All right, picking against you in, in your underrated, but I mean overrated. But yeah, 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 <laughs> overrated. That's the word. Uh, anyways, Desharmu taking it in the one over Itachi, who is, uh, in all fairness, having a pretty pretty good start to the season. But I think Desharmu is a really really excellent player, and he's he's gonna get that W. And then we've got uh, Robobson versus Arhat. Robobson's not starting out too too great, and Arhat is also a great player, and so I'm picking Arhat here to take it over Robobson. And then Liquid Ox versus Dano, and Dano, man, he is really struggling this season. He's really struggling so far. And Liquid Ox isn't really doing that great either, but Ox, I think, you, you can pick Ox pretty reliably to win. And uh, in the four, the Chronic is starting out real, real hot. And Mad at Arms is really or not. So the Chronic is probably going to pick up this W as well. And then in the five, uh, we've got Kazargo versus Jim Phylos. I cannot pick against my boy Jim, especially when his opponent is 0 2. So I'm giving it to Jim in the five, giving it 3 2 to an oil team. F2L is going to take another, uh, another L. And uh, they're going to be trying to, trying to fight for a playoff spot from behind. I, uh, I I mean, is is that why their name is 2L? Because they're going to have two L's after this week? <laughs> they are going to have two L's. <laughs> All right. Ron? Frequent um, to lose. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, went a, I went a little bit different from you guys this week here. Um, I learned my lesson with the Atachi pick from last week, uh, going with Avi and, and getting surprised that he had already swept him in the chat. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. And I love you, Desharmo, uh, captain in my pro series, but I think Atachi gets the better of you in this one. Um, in the two, I've got Arhat over Rebobson. Uh The three, I think Ox takes it over Dano. Um, and I think the Chronic continues a really strong start uh, with a win in the four over Matt. And I've got Kazargar actually picking up the victory in the five as well. Um, the PR is a bit different. I know there's a little bit of hype about Kazargar going into the season from some members of F2L. So I think this is the week where um, he, he really tries to prove that uh, he's got what it takes to hold it down in the five. And I think he picks up that victory for F2L. So I've got it 4-1 F2L uh, winning this one here. Yeah, isn't Kazargar supposed to be some LHS specialist? I, I think that's what they said. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I don't know the player. I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm not willing to trust personally. that. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. got what it takes to turn it around. We'll see. Yeah. I, again, two weeks, small sample size. Well, oh, I just noticed Jim Phylos is finally above 50 PR. That is incredible. Oh, wow. Good job, Jay, nice. man. Congratulations, bro. 57. 
moving on up. Yeah. All right. He is. They're gonna they're gonna have to break up their team next season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways. Um, who wants to do it? Oh, I can go ahead and take it if you want. All right. All right, so we've got... Oh, oh, this is our team. Ron. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was asking. Who wants to do it? Slam, does does anyone players. have any idea what Sage is going to go with as a pick? Um, All right. So uh, we've got A2 versus Ron and the one, and... Uh, what 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 are we calling this guy? Martin 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 Brodor or something? Yes, Martin Brodor. Martin Brodor. Uh, Martin Brodor versus Lord Murphy <laughs> in the two. J.R. Jurgalaw versus Starkey in the three. Osmanot versus myself in the four. I'm actually scheduling with Oz right now. Uh, <laughs> it's me, Mike. V- it's, it's me, Mike V versus Silver in the five, and uh. I think Ron is... You can't pick against him. The guy is too damn good. I'm going to pick Ron to win in the one. Uh, Lil Herthy is, is also really incredible, and Lil Herthy is going to show Martin Brodor how it's done in the two. <laughs> and then we've got Starkey, who is starting out real, real hot. Uh, going to pick it up against uh, my boy Jugs over there in the three. And I really got to come back. All right, this is this is my week. I'm, I'm bringing it back this week. I know all y'all are gonna root against me, and that's fine. But I, I'm gonna I, I'm picking up this W, guys. Taking it in the four, and then Silver, our our illustrious captain, uh, will be heartily winning in the five versus Mike. Despite the fact that I could never seem to beat Mike and always beat Silver, I still think he, Silver's gonna take it here. So I'm giving it five zero to Burn. We are bringing the heat this week, boys. Who would have ever expected that? Nice. Sage staying on brand. I like it. All right. Oh, man, you got to. Ron, go ahead. So um, this week, this is going to be a really good match, I think. Uh, Two teams right kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, I think we underrated uh, Tan Pams, and we're sleeping on them early in the season. So this is going to be a tough match for my team. Uh, Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. You, You didn't. You you did have that call. I should I should have known, you know, because they got rid of Brushy Tuna, so obviously they're going to be <laughs> there much <it> better. <laughs> but um, yeah. So this this match, I see it going. Um, I think I can pick up the win in the one. I think Harthy takes the two. I've got uh, Starkey Medusa's win in the three. Um, I don't know about the Sage guy. I don't think I can trust him to get wins. Uh, I think Oz takes the four. And uh, in the five, this is going to be really interesting. I think this could be a decider if any of those other uh, earlier ones go differently. Um, I do actually see Mike V beating Silver. It's interesting. It's a battle of two of my captains, um, my hero captain versus my wild captain. Um, But I think Mike V has the PR edge. He's a little bit more experienced, and I think he can get the win this time around. But uh, hopefully... Uh, Silver can pick up that win. Uh, all things considered, it does give a three to two for Burninators, and we uh, oh. we get the victory this week. It's um, it, it's really uh, funny because I, I, I see where your loyalties lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, by the way, Blue Spartan had a question. Starkey, we we keep calling him Starkey because that's what he generally goes by, but Medusa's is Starkey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. What well, like I think Starkey's his name is Bayonet, right? I think. Uh, yeah, like he. Well, he changed it to Medusa. Oh, did he? All right. Yeah, to be more consistent. Awesome. Yeah, and I, then we introduce inconsistency. You know, just for the fun of it. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I, I, I find it funny how you were saying it was your legacy versus your wild captain in the, or sorry, your hero versus your wild captain in the five, and then you have your legacy captain there in the four. Oh my God, my legacy captain is also. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even notice that. Yeah, this is. This is a battle that concerns three. If only Desharmo was playing on Tan Pams or, yeah. or Burninators or something, I'd have all four of my captains represented in this match. <laughs> oh man, then you'd really be torn. No wonder you picked Oz and Mike. Oh, what a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm gonna go next. I'm sorry, but um, I'm picking A2. You know, we all know A2 is an insane player. I mean, I'm not saying you're not, but. Um, yeah, I think A2 is going to pull it off in the one. I don't think I'm ever going to pick against Harthy in the two, except for last week when he was playing the Colt. But 
Earth, he's an insane too. I'm giving it to Starkey slash Medusa as number three. You gotta go with who, who, um, funnily enough, also happens to be my legacy captain in the four. And then plus he just has a better record. So that seems like a pretty easy pick. And in the five, I'm going with Silver. And I think that's going to be the deciding factor in a 3 2 Burninators win. Solid. All right. And last up, we have. Well, go ahead, bro. And our last match of the week, we've got Licensed Illidan versus Booze Cruise. And uh, this one here. Trippy Toad has started out with a bit of a, a rough season to begin with. I think they turn it around this week and pick up a win in the one. Um, I think Bomb D continues uh, their tear and uh, gets a victory for Booze Cruise in the two. I've got Anfall winning in the three, Mako in the four, and I think Shu takes it in the five. License to Illidan is going to move on with a victory in this one, three to two. Um, but this should be pretty close. I could easily see a lot of these matches going the other way. Definitely. All right. Uh, the Good stuff, man. And just a quick update. I just finished scheduling with uh, Osmonaut, so we're on for Friday at 4 p.m. Central. All right, all right. All right. Good stuff. That's that's when we'll know if, if I got my first W this season. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, all right. I'll go ahead and do my yep. predictions as well. Unless, Ted, did you want to? No, Sorry. go ahead. I, I totally interrupted there. No, no, you're good. Go ahead. All right. All right. Well, uh, I don't know why you guys are so on board with Trippy winning when he is 0-2 right now, guys. Like, come on. Zancat actually has a W. All right, and so I'm giving it to Zancat here. Uh, he, he's gonna he's gonna be my Xanax this week because he's got that <laughs> at W. Uh, and then in the two, I'm gonna give it to Doctor Bomb D. I I am feeling the hype. Plus, it's just fun to root against Donde. Donde, uh, I love you. And uh, anyways, in the three seed, we've got Ann Paul versus Matty Ebbs, and Matty Ebbs is on a tear, man. He's tearing it up, and give it to Matty Ebbs. He's gonna take it. Uh, over Anfall, and then in the four, I've got Mako taking it over Cone because it's kind of real easy to root against Cone right now. Do a lot. Uh, and then in the five, I've got Saku taking it over Shu, and it's just I, I like both these guys. Shu is not quite having a very good season, but uh. They're both real good players, and he might be giving... Actually, no, I think the BGH award is already gone. I think Singlin gave it to somebody week one. Anyways, uh, I, I still think she was going to lose to Saku, unfortunately, and that is going to be a 3-2 for Boo's Cruise. And they really need this W because they are 0-2 right now as a team. And I know I was rooting against them at the start of the season, but they could definitely swing it back. I think if Cone or Shu start winning, then they are going to be playoff contenders by the end of the season if they just turn it around. All right, I'm up next. I have, well, said I'm going against all your logic there. I'm going Trippy in the one. I think he's a stronger player than O2 suggests, and I think he's going to pull out the win. I'm giving it to Donde in the two because it's Donde. Obviously, Bombed is a strong player, but so is Donde. Three, I'm giving it to Maddie. Again, two oh, very strong sorts of the season. And then four five, I'm going based on record, giving it to Mako and Sako. And I'm giving four to one to license Silidum. That'd be a very big week for them. Yeah, that would be real big. Yeah. Alright. It's All gonna right. be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, well. Time to get to scheduling everybody, you know, take Sage's example and uh, go schedule your matches. See if you can get on stream, start, uh, Cone, start lining up if some you're stuff. watching. <laughs> Sage has got a little uh, vendetta against Cone right now. Make sure you don't DQ if you're watching out there. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'm pretty sure all the board members have a vendetta against him for DQing in both, on both of the teams that ah. he uh, is playing on in week one. Yeah. No, he's he's still in hot water. This past week, where he actually played his matches, does not make up. He's not forgiven. He needs he needs to keep scheduling and playing. All right. So.
Cone's on notice, but the rest of us, <laughs> you know, as far as uh, what we've got coming up, we have some really exciting stuff for the rest of the week, too. Uh, Ted, what do we have for the upcoming events? Yeah, so um, obviously tomorrow night we have Heart Center with Don Bay and Lotus Night. Thursday we have Tavern Talk for, with Ducharmo, Dano, and Travis Crono. Unfortunately, um, no matches have been confirmed yet. They're waiting till the, um, what's it called? The deck submission deadline, so they see, you know, who's uh, what volunteering to play their matches when. So matches will be finalized later. But of course, we have Friday night fights, Salty Saturday, and and Saturday slash Sunday Schoolstone, as well as uh, Sunday Showdown will be coming to you all the nights this week. And then, of course, next Monday we have the brand new show, Wild and Out. We had a very successful first show last week and or last night, and I'm expecting we're going to continue to see them keeping it up in the future. Awesome. Yeah, and um, just Adam asked what the numbers mean besides besides their names. Um, they mean <laughs> uh, yeah, they're the um numbers of predictions we've gotten correct so far this season. So I'm 27 for 60, Ron's 28 for 60, and Sage is 30 for 60. Aka we all suck. Yeah. I'm the best. <laughs> yep, Sage, Sage is currently matching, uh, flipping a coin. So you know, we're. Uh... Oh yeah, there's there it is. I was waiting on Isocles to yeah. come into the the chat with um question about the guest picks. Yeah. Um, so far, guest is way outperforming. Uh, yeah, hold on, I have the number. The guest is currently twenty for thirty. Yeah, that's really, really good. I think I was seventeen for thirty after my first week or something. You were nine. You were nineteen for thirty after your first week. Ooh, that's that's pretty good. I was better than a coin flip. Yeah, you guys, you really need to pick up the pace. Hey, like we were talking about with um, the teams in the standings down at the bottom, you know, it's way early, so there's still a lot of time for us to turn it around and try to get some more picks right. Hopefully, uh, at least for sure. for some of us, that turns around. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience before we wrap this up? And questions from the audience going once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> any, anyone out there before we close? It, it doesn't seem like it or else I think All you right. guys be talking because I can't yeah. see the audience chat, just so you know. I, I'm on mobile, so I'm just kind of <laughs> chilling in Discord. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, basically, I won't say who's the guest for next week. Ron, I don't think you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I completely forgot to mention it actually. Yeah. So uh, I was I was talking with A2 Battleship before uh, we scheduled our match, and uh, we have a little bet going. If uh, if he's able to beat me, then he's earned his spot. Um, and if I win, then the guest spot is still open. So you know, A2, yeah. if if you're listening out there. Go ahead and beat me this week, and we'll have you on as a guest. We will take the highest bidder. Uh, whoever uh, is the highest bidder, if A2 loses, we'll get the spot next week. Um, <laughs> Yellow Dart, if you're watching, I know you've been hounding me to get back on. Uh, we're trying to go for a different team each week. But <laughs> if you want to throw money at me, man, yeah. you on there. <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw that coming from chat. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Interesting question All from right. Pond. Top four after this week. Top, Top four after four. this week? Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think we can reliably say Dad Legend is going to be one of the top four. Yeah. I think um, NPH is going to be up there. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Well, no. I also no, 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 Spies no. That Flies. I think Spies of Flies is definitely I'm a, in the top I'm, I'm pretty sure NPH is going to get no points this week. Oh, right. <laughs> playing cult. Yeah. <laughs> no bias. No bias. Not here. at all. Um, yeah, but I honestly, uh, I don't really flies, anticipate I too much of a shakeup in the current standings. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, uh, Dad Legend Spies That Flies uh, reliably hold on to their spots in the top two out of four. And I think F2L works their way back into the top four. And um, I mean, the the I, one I that think... I think is maybe like the, the bold pick for me is I think ATL gets, uh, gets to hang on to top four, even though they're playing Dad Legend this week. That is bold. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I think uh, it'll be Dad Legend, MPH, Spies That Flies, and Tan Pams. Believe it. 
are you really picking the team that's playing our team <laughs> to jump on? I love how Ted's like <laughs> bias. Oh no, NPH is gonna drop out because we're playing my team. Sage is like, oh, the team that's playing our team. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna jump this <laughs> easy. <laughs> oh, wait, no, 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 Burnators. Burnators are gonna. Are gonna oh, there, oh, there it is. Yeah, I mean, is. you did pick us five zero. These things are. <laughs> <laughs> a little inconsistent. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was I was looking at the standings and not not the right on current week. <clears throat> All right. All right. Yeah. I think that about wraps it up, guys. Oh, and uh, yeah, as as Matt at Arms pointed out, you know, make sure you guys listen to the podcast too. Find oh, yeah. out on THL Pow uh, for who you know some of these top rated teams and power ranked teams are going to be. Always, yeah, I, always really exciting and fun to tune into that. Um, and as well. uh, I believe if I'm not wrong, it gets recorded tonight and then put on the website tomorrow during the day. Awesome. Yeah. Something like that. No, um, it it has not been recorded yet, Fonda. I know it usually gets recorded right after this show. All right, but anyways, yeah, I think Icicles was talking about it like that last week, saying yeah, that right after this show they're going to record. Anyways, uh, we thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it, and we hope that you keep tuning in every week. Uh, yeah. I've been Sage. I've been Ted. And I'm Ron Mexico. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining Ron us Mexico. tonight. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Good night.